idcwoodcraft.com. Hi guys, it's Liberty back with IDC Woodcraft. Today, my CNC peeps, we are gonna be working on a project that Garrett hasn't really gotten the time to get to. A lot of you have been asking how to carve a cribbage board. Uh, I know I'm not the CNC expert, so today we're gonna learn together. Now with a cribbage board, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but the basic or standard style is like this little arch shape. Um, so that's what we're gonna hit today, but that doesn't mean that our project is gonna be lacking in personality. If you've noticed at all, I love adding personality to just about everything. So today we're gonna make this personality specifically for Garrett because I think he needs to keep this on his new coffee table at his new house. Let's get the process started. For our hold down method today, I'm gonna be using X-Fasten double-sided woodworking tape. And then we're gonna run a surfacing program. I used a pocket tool path in order to create the surfacing program. And I just made it slightly bigger than my project to ensure that I could get a nice flat surface all the way across. The reason we want to surface down our projects is to ensure that we start with a clean slate. Here you can see my chips are very yellow. I'm working with pine and it's a very sappy wood, so I wanted to make sure I had a good surface to start with. Changing out the bit for the next step is gonna be a LV30, which is our 30 degree little V bit on idcwoodcraft.com. Be sure to clean out your collets between every bit, giving each bit the best chance to stay in there and give the best carve. For this next step, since we're adding a little personality to the project, I wanted to make sure our design was big and bold with some paint. In order to get nice crisp lines, I'm using Aura Mask. It's a good way to cover your project and protect the rest of it from the areas you want to add a little color to. Now onto the design side of the project. I wasn't quite sure how to approach it, but I knew I wanted to put the IDC Woodcraft logo in there to add a little bit of the Garrett personality, since this will be for him. I decided to use the trace bitmap tool with the fade features since we have a black and white logo. I felt like I could achieve at least a good starting point with this. If you drift the fade tool to a greater or lesser degree, it does change the outcome of the design that you're going to achieve from it. So I just played around for a minute to get the degrees that I wanted. Now that I've got the general design that I want, I'm gonna go through and edit it. So we're gonna exit out of this tool. From here, I switched to the trim tool, um, thinking I could use this to clean things up, and it turned out to just be easier to select and delete the majority of the items that I did not want. And remember, you can always use the shift button to select more than one vector at a time, especially for situations like this where you're doing a lot of deleting. From here, I zoomed in on the details of the design. As you can see, the bitmap wasn't perfect, so we've got some errors here, and it's not quite as clean as I wanted it to be. To make these edits, I started going into the node mode and cutting the vectors and then filling in those spaces with the draw curve tool. I am so glad they brought that back. While all this editing may seem like a lot of work, I'm really glad for the trace bitmap tool. For me, it saved me a lot of brain work on having to figure out exactly where I wanted everything. I could just have a baseline and edit from there. Now with the bit, it didn't turn out so great. It kind of took me a few minutes to play around with the details that it did get and see what I wanted it to look like in the end. Keeping in mind what its final carve will look like. I went through the pieces and picked out the one I liked. From there, I copied it and pasted it and then mirrored that to get that perfect duplicate shape on either side, kind of overlapping them a little bit till I got the width that I wanted and then go through with the trim tool to delete the extra lines. Make sure you close all of your vectors with the close line tool and then I just copy pasted that for the second line. Now for the end of the bit, I didn't like that part of it at all, so I had to go through and do a little bit of manual design. I used our IDC Woodcraft logo again for reference and drew out what I felt would give the bit some better personality. From there, I combined all my lines by using the Join Vectors to Similar Point tool and just eyeballed where it should go, and I think that looks great. We have one more detail that did not come through in the bitmap design how I wanted it to, and that is that part on the eye. So I just went through and did a quick little drawing that I felt like matched the D and C of the IDC. From there, let's see how it carves out.
And now for the good part, peeling off the aura mask. Now since pine is such a porous wood, I did prep with a clear coat before adding in the black and that, with the aura mask, kept these lines nice and crisp. The next step in the design process, which gives you a little bit of a peek at our game board, is the scoring. I'm going to go into our draw text tool and size them up to an inch by a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to use our rotation tool. They have absolute and relative. I'm gonna use the relative and rotate this 90 degrees. And we're gonna do the same for all the rest of the scores. Go back into the draw text tool. I'm gonna to move up my letters and resize it and rotate that one as well. And then we'll just repeat that process up to 115 and then of course the finish line. I love using the 30 degree little V bit from IDC Woodcraft. I can get a lot of design into such a little project and it gives me such fine detail. Dust off the project and then back into design software for the game pass. We're gonna start off with three same length lines and I'm just kind of eyeballing their distance here based on the board that I have. I used the grid on the design that I've got turned on here to help guide me in where I wanted those lines to go. From there, we're gonna use the draw curve tool and I'm just gonna stretch it out all the way. It seems to give the best curve and it's its max limit. So we're gonna make sure it's in the middle there. And then this time it's a smaller arc, but we're still gonna go out to the max distance that it allows us to do. I tried to make it precisely one inch and it didn't work out that way, but that's fine. From there, we're gonna create an eighth inch circle and that is gonna be for our holes. I created three in a line. And then we're gonna group those together. Grouping them together is very important for the next step. Next, we're gonna copy a long line. We're gonna use this tool and we're gonna put 43 copies along this first line. And then we're gonna copy along that curve with 15 copies. And copy along those next lines with 43 as well. And then that small curve, we're gonna do five. From there, you're gonna delete every sixth set of holes. This is how your final design's gonna look and you can delete your guidelines. From there, I am grouping everything together to get the most fluid path out of it, and I can also center it on my board. I'm gonna show you two different methods for making cribbage board holes. The first one is called a peck drilling tool path. With that, you typically use an upcut drill bit, and it takes a lot of excess time, but it's to ensure all of those wood chips get out and there's no fire risk. With the IDC Woodcraft drill bit, you can go all the way down in one plunge and you can see just how much time this is saving me on carving. And you can see there's no lack in wood chips spilling out of it. By using the IDC Woodcraft drilling bit, I cut my carving time down in almost half because it's not taking that extra time to go in and out of each hole.
dust it off, and I'm loving how it's turned out. We just have one more step to go. Jumping back into the design software, we're using our draw line tool. I'm gonna to create a rectangle around the majority of the curbage project to create the baseline for the straight part. And then from there, I'm going to use the nodes to cut these lines. From there, we're bringing back that glorious draw curve tool to create our arch over the final pieces of our curvature board. Looks good to me. Now I just have to make sure everything is in order. For the final outline, I chose the 3 16th compression bit from idcwoodcraft.com, and let's see it carve. And oops! So all of that carving we were doing, since pine is such a soft wood, threw quite a bit of wood chips underneath my tape, and it didn't have the hold down that it should have. No big deal though, put a new layer on and start the tool path again. Despite our hiccup, I think it came out really nice and I'm just gonna take a Dremel and clean it up a little bit. And that was it. Here we go, guys. We explored some different bits, some different ways to create tool paths and get our designs exactly how we want them. I am pretty proud of how this turned out. I know you guys have been asking for a cribbage board video for a while, so I hope that scratched the itch. I'm really proud of how this turned out. I loved getting to add bits of creativity and personality to this project to make it absolutely unique. And I hope I gave you guys some ideas on how to make your projects your personality. I am excited to use what I've learned this time in future projects and can't wait to see the personality continue to come out. All of the products, including the bits that I've used in this video are linked down below. You can get them at our website at idcwoodcraft.com. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and please tell me what you want me to make next down below. If you have any questions, me or Garrett would be happy to answer them in the comments and we'll see you next time. IDCWoodcraft.com.